Greetings everyone, it's Raina. So this video is for the new moon in Libra, which is happening on October 19th. And the time is 2.12 p.m. Central Standard Time, because that's where I'm based out of, so I'm going with that. It's the center of the United States. And if you're in Europe or other parts of the world, you're going to have to check that out yourself. I'm assuming it'll be probably about eight hours ahead or some places it'll be behind, but um, somewhere in that vicinity. And what I want to do first is talk about some of the new moon wishes that you can make. I have this book by Jan Spiller, New Moon Astrology, and um, it's kind of interesting because they talk about specific wishes for each new moon. So let me go to Libra. And just on the surface, we know that Libra is a cardinal air sign ruled by Venus. And Libra is known for diplomacy and you could say harmony, for being a good negotiator, for marriage, it rules the seventh house of marriage. So rather than just some kind of love affairs, Librans like to have that um, permanent relationship, refinement, and um, you know it's funny in her book she says healing codependency, which is maybe that's supposed to be healing and codependency, but it's together, so I'm assuming it's one word, which is interesting because I think of uh, the shadow side of Libra as codependent. But teamwork, definitely. Librans, if you are a Libra, Libra person watching this, chances are you like to work with other people instead of yourself. I mean, if, if for instance, I'm just taking myself. I, I don't like to work with other people. I like to have things my own way. So <laughs> that kind of um, gets rid of that one. And it's so funny, you know, whenever you're applying for a job and they say, I don't know if they, they do it, They've been doing it lately, but that was always one of those buzzwords. Are you a team player? And, uh, you know, can you say no during an interview? No, I'm not a team player. <laughs> I mean, I think you can be cooperative without being interested in collaborating with other people. That doesn't mean that you're a complete jerk and that you just can't cooperate period but maybe you have a vision of your of your own now i'm just looking at some more of the the keywords that they mention in her that she mentions and she mentions uh beauty yeah that's a big one too beauty the aesthetics of life and obviously everything has a shadow if you overvalue um appearances it can make you shallow. It can give you bad judgment where you judge the surface. You judge the, the cover of the book and not the book itself. And that could get you into trouble in relationships. And even in any kind of situation, it looks good on the surface, maybe like a, something you're going to buy. And then it turns out it, it's, it's a clunker. Um, and if you would have really done your research, something may not look that good on the surface but it's really long lasting you know i just what popped in my mind was a volvo there may there may be people that that would never want a volvo but i love that i would never want a ferrari i would never want i, I, I don't even drive I don't, i've never had a license i ride a bicycle so so i'm the wrong person i guess to talk about this but if i ever had a car it would be a volvo maybe that's because i have a moon in virgo and i like functionality but it's like I could see I could see like a, li a Libra person being attracted to something because it's it's a bright shiny object and not what it actually you know if it's a it's a, if it's a good thing and same with people bright shiny objects so look at that I mean yeah let's look at that look at how what you know how you value things in your life based upon how they appear and whether or not that is a wise thing to do. But also, 
how about um, the other side of things? Do you bring beauty into your life? I see so many people and they're driving cars that are black, brown, beige, uh, white. They're just so boring. I mean, what about other colors? I think colors are magical and I think they're therapeutic. And I noticed yesterday everything that I that I had in my possessions, they were all aqua. And and so I was thinking to myself, what you know, I saw these people looking at me, but it's like I, I'm sure people think I'm color coordinating and I'm not. It's just happens to be where I'm vibrating, you know, and I think it's connected to the fifth chakra, the throat chakra. Um, and my sun sign is Sagittarius and that's connected to turquoise. So it was in that family, all of these colors I was wearing. And I just thought it was funny because I'm sure there are people who think I was just doing it for a shallow reason. No, I, I really, it's like this thing. If you look at this color, it, I don't know what color it shows up as, but it's kind of like a, gr a bluish green, but it's actually more green than I thought it was when I took it home. I thought it was more turquoise. But those, that's the color I've been really gravitating towards. And I used to gravitate towards purple a lot. So bringing more color into your life, bringing more beauty. I mean, your, the food that you eat, is it beautiful to look at? Um, decorations. I'm not, you know, much on that, but you may be, and not to, 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 to impress other people, but just, you know, are they meaningful and are they tasteful? Yeah, good taste, elegance, grace, luxury. And I think that we could talk about the law of attraction with luxury. You know, do you... Do you honor yourself with buying yourself something nice once in a while? I'm not talking about overspending, but you know, being able to appreciate yourself and also to think that you're deserving of receiving things that matter. So if somebody gives you a gift, are you capable of accepting it with um, a gracious attitude? And you know, speaking of that, looking at it from the position of doing it, and also appreciating it in others. The idea of tact, of politeness, um, these things are in short supply these days. I've seen it in my own life and I don't like it. And I know that it's wrong, but if I hold the door for somebody and they don't say thank you, it really pisses me off. Uh, I don't say anything to them, but it just, if I say hello to somebody and they don't say anything, it just drives me crazy. And I just think, I just think in terms of politeness. Um, so that kind of thing has to be um, given and also received. And if you see that other people are not being polite to you, what do you do? Do you react in a, in a rude way to them? Or do you, well, you know, what do you do? I'm not, I'm not judging. I'm just, I'm just curious what people do. But um, looking at these issues, how can I be more civil? And I can be more civil. We all can. I try to be. I try to be civil, but there may be certain areas where I'm not, you know. Maybe online is where, <laughs> for me, my civility falls apart. Um, probably. I'll, I'll admit that sometimes. I, if somebody gets under my skin, yeah. And, uh, but um, it, it's, it's, just, it's just very interesting because there's um, a lot of um, Libra that is to be admired. Now let's talk for a minute about what is kind of the shadow aspects of uh, Libra. The, one of the big ones is shallowness and inauthenticity people-pleasing. I said one, but I'm connecting all of those things. And I think that this is something that is rampant in our society, but especially with women. Yeah, I'm going to pick on my fellow sisters and whether or not you feel like it's not nice to say no to somebody, even though you don't want to do something. And um, it's so important to be able to say no politely you know, not to get upset, 
sometimes people they feel so bad about saying no that they actually are rude because they they they're so they're so um guilty about saying no but being able to say no in a way that you're very confident that closes the door on somebody you know trying to worm their way in and trying to get you to do something but not feeling guilty about it either it's it's um an art that has to be refined if you're somebody who has a habit but too many women are weenies okay and you have to stop being weenies because you're going to get that person back in some way. You're going to be passive aggressive. You're going to forget to do something. That's a form of passive aggression anyway. But you will be a much better person overall if you learn to say no very politely and, and also stand up for what you, you need. Um, say what you need. So many, so many people are trying to, you know, going along to get along, they call it. And it just, it doesn't work. First of all, it doesn't work. And it's really not um, a part of the spiritual life because the spiritual life is about harmony, but also honoring the self too. You can't, you can't um, try to make somebody else happy at your expense. It doesn't work that way. That's not how life works, and it's not logical that if you're unhappy and you're making somebody else happy, that it's going to be a harmonious situation. It's not. Um, and um, sometimes we sacrifice something that we want for somebody else, but it really isn't a sacrifice. It's something that we're happy to do because we, we, we say to ourselves, you know, I don't really need to do, do such and such right now. I'm going to let this person do what they need to do. And... Um, and you're okay with it. You're not feeling like you have lost a part of yourself. Okay. So those are the kind of issues you can um, kind of work with at the time of the new moon. I'm going to also look at some of the transits that are happening around this time. I've got my computer here. Ugh. <laughs> with this noise. Now here's another thing with Libra. Libra likes everything to be harmonious, including the atmosphere. So I, even though I don't have any plants in Libra, I have Taurus rising, which is also ruled by Venus, and that the v Venusian influence of harmonious things, including sounds, is so important, I feel. And so what kind of sounds do you listen to? Like if you listen to music, do you understand that music has the power to agitate as well as invigorate? Agitation is not invigoration. And sometimes you don't want to invigorate. Sometimes you want to become more sedate. You want to be peaceful. And can you appreciate music that is more peaceful? Does it always have to get you so emotional or so riled up in some way. Um, okay, so at the time of this new moon, it's actually going to be a late degree of Libra. It's going to be uh, 26 degrees. So it's very, you know, it's pretty close to Scorpio. And of course, Jupiter has just gone into Scorpio. Um, and there's going to be a bunch of conjunctions to Jupiter, which is really nice. Even though they're not in the same sign, they're within the orb because um, Jupiter is in such an early degree of, of uh, Scorpio. So Sun, Moon, and Mercury all in conjunction with Jupiter. So very good. You may be feeling very positive. And thinking good thoughts, which is always a good thing, especially at the time of the, uh, the new moon. And it may be kind of a, a change of pace for you. Maybe you have been feeling a little bit like, whoa, I certainly have. Especially at the begin around that time of that full moon in Aries, it was like a doozy. Um, and it, was, it felt like very heavy. And so now you may be feeling um, lighter. There are a bunch of oppositions to Uranus, Sun, Moon, Mercury, and Jupiter even in opposition to Uranus. So 
there can be these extremes or sudden shifts, um, especially this feeling of wanting to be free coming up for people. Uh, so Venus is in Libra, Mars is still in Virgo at this time, but they're considered a conjunction once again because of the the degrees that are apart. Conjunctions don't just rely on them being in the same sign because that's not always the case. The, you know, you can have a late degree of one sign, early degree of another, and there's still a conjunction. Um, let me see. A trine between Mercury and Neptune, so that can be very good for visualization. And at the new moon, planting those seeds. So that is very interesting. And of course, um, because we're dealing with the cardinal sign of um, Libra, that's always very nice for making things happen. Okay, cardinal signs make things happen. So I'm going to pick a card from the Wisdom of the Oracle deck. See which one I get. I hope I get a card I've never gotten before. I think I've gotten this before. A leg up. So I'm going to just read these as I go along this time. Receiving help, delegating authority, interdependence. Well, interdependence, definitely Libra. You've come to a point where going it alone is no longer optional for you. Life has a way of presenting you with the perfect people to align with who can give you a leg up during this le next phase of your journey. Help comes to you in all areas of your, your life when you need a boost. The trick is to accept that aid so freely given. When you embrace interdependence, allowing teamwork and independence to commingle, miracles happen. Now is such a time. And I'm going to read the prosperity message for this card. Now is the perfect time to seek advice from a mentor or business advisor who has been where you want to go to help you get there too. If you do, you will receive very good counsel that will aid in your prosperity. It may also be the case that your endeavors have grown and you are in a position when it, where you can't you just can't do it all yourself anymore. Time to bring in on those who can give you a leg up. Trust that help is available and will indeed appear. Delegate authority to others so that you can take steps toward your big dream. The perfect people will arrive at the perfect time so long as you step forward for forward with just a mustard seed of faith and yeah I mean I should have I should have clarified that I think sometimes those of us who feel like we like to do things alone it's just that we may have had negative experiences trying to coordinate things with other people but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way so I'm not going to just write off um, other people. As, as a matter of fact, I think in our societies today, wherever you are in the globe, that we need to band together. And apart from the government, apart from these other organizations, and try to be interdependent, because, you know, whether it's corporate interests or political interests, which now are combined in many cases, they don't necessarily serve the people. So we have to be proactive and do things for ourselves. And, you know, actually, I do associate Lib Libra with politics. And yet we have to see when these things are not working out for us. And really, um, if you think about it, bartering, doing things with other people, if you don't have funds, trying to have an alternative economy can be a wonderful way to cooperate with other people and get what you want and have the life that you want and kind of bypass the mainstream, which doesn't seem to be doing, you know, us 
much good in some cases, and yet people still depend on external forces when we could um, start networking and, and making things happen that way and, and really cooperating with one another. So I'm going to pick a card from the Kyle Gray um, deck, which is um, Keepers of the Light. I like to hold up these decks because, you know, people who are artists should be honored. We really honor uh, people who are in, in professional sports all the time. How, how many times do we really give artists their props? We really should because it's, it's such a talent. Okay. The Holy Spirit, expect miracles. Yes, and especially with all those those um, conjunctions to Jupiter. Jupiter is so lucky. It says, remember that only love is real. Miracles will occur naturally. Spirit has your back. Whoa, yay. I'm down for that. How about you guys? Or up for that? <laughs> okay, and let's see what the definition is, or the Holy Spirit. It's interesting, the Holy Spirit, because you think of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So, is the Holy Spirit a man too? Holy Spirit. Oh. Huh. That's funny. I can't find it in my book. Am I looking at the right book? I wonder if this is the wrong book. No, this is... It's funny, I wonder if I have Doreen Virtue's deck here by accident. No, this is the right deck. So I'm trying to figure out where is Holy Spirit. Huh. Oh, there it is. It has a separate section in the back. Okay, let's put this out here. According to the spiritual text, A Course in Miracles, the Holy Spirit medi mediates, or no, meditates between illusion and truth. It's the essence that allows us to move beyond the illusion of fear or the illusions that our fear has created. It's the holiest light of truth and love that we can ever experience, an aspect of our truest self, the, tr the self that never is, that's never separate from God. When it appears in a reading, prepare for the miraculous. Expect the unexpected. Expect miracles. A real turnaround is possible now. Angels are dancing around you. Leave behind thoughts, memories, and feelings that are no longer serving you, and remember that love that you are. Move into your heart and allow that love to shine out into the world. Then miracles can happen. So it sounds like the Holy Spirit is... Yeah, when they say um, spirit soul, you know, part of that soul of us, you know, that energy field that connects us to God. It's, it's always an interesting... Um, it's always interesting to try to pinpoint what, what these terms mean. Sometimes they seem to mean different things to different people. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? Just because I'm the kind of person to do something like this. I was hearing more about Doreen Virtue, and I think she's been saying not to use her cards. So guess what, Doreen? I'm going to use your cards. How do you like them apples? You know, if, you, if I bought your deck... I'm going to make use of your cards. That's all that there is to it. There's nothing wrong with these cards. You can do whatever you want to do, but don't tell me what to do. Okay. Follow your heart, St. Francis.
The answer to your question is in your heart. This card signifies that you can trust your heart's true desires, even if you can't clearly see how the outcome will appear or manifest. This is a situation where you're called to, upon to walk in faith and be true to yourself. The universe will ensure that your needs are met and will help your relationships as you make life changes. That is such a beautiful message. Can you imagine if we didn't have this in our life, these kinds of messages? It's so true. And I needed this for myself. And I'm sure some people needed it for the, themselves as well. Because sometimes we get very um, frightened by the unknown. And it's important to remember that the universe has our back at all times. The additional meanings for this card. You already know what to do. Trust your intuition and take action accordingly. Your feelings are accurate and valid. You're guided to make important and happy life changes. You're receiving true divine guidance through your feelings and intuition. And so many times we don't trust our feelings, okay? And um, with tying this into the, the Libra new moon, it's important to be able to see things without tinge of emotion because sometimes emotion can be fear-based okay and a lot of times i think a lot of emotions are based on fears that we maybe we've experienced in the past either in this life or possibly other lifetimes and and we shrink our world when when we are thinking of doing something we end up talking ourselves out of it because we're so afraid of what might happen you know St. Francis of Assisi was born to a wealthy Italian cloth merchant, but he later renounced his inheritance to follow an ascetic, uh, ascetic spiritual path. As he volunteered in hospitals and ministered to the sick, he gained followers who eventually became the Franciscans. Many legends speak of St. Francis's ability to communicate with animals, and today he's the patron saint of the environment and animals. Call upon St. Francis for help in situations where your family or friends don't understand your choices or spiritual path or any issue involving animals. Maybe you decide to go vegan. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I know I'm, I'm sounding very strident in this reading, but um, I'm, I'm thinking that there are so many things that we can do. For me, I would like to sometime go and volunteer and clean up the river, clean up just or maybe even by myself, I was thinking of doing this, just taking a plastic bag and taking one street and cleaning up all the litter there. Because a lot of times I see litter and I just shake my head and say, oh, there's so many ignorant people in the world. And yet I am not doing anything to solve the problem. And I think, well, there are people that are paid to, to do this, so I don't have to do it. But instead of doing that, what if I was part, part of the solution? So... Yeah, you know, whatever it is that that deals with the environment, that deals with um, following your heart and being who you truly came here to be, that's important. And I'm going to leave it on this note because the, what I was talking about with authenticity, it's so important for us to be who we came here to be. And it doesn't mean that you are hurting your family or threatening your, your friends and their choices that they've made in their lives. You know, everyone is responsible for themselves. You came here to, to walk your path. And you can't walk another's path. You can try, but it's not going to be your path. So if you want to make other people happy, the best way to do that is to follow your heart. Okay, you guys. Have a great um, new moon in Libra. Take care. Bye.